We're at Antietam National Battlefield, where the bloodiest day of the Civil War occurred. You may be wondering why the National Air and Space Museum is at a Civil War battlefield. There are a lot of connections and communications between then and now. Antietam National Battlefield, site of the bloodiest single day in America's history. It is on this battlefield where the Army of Northern Virginia under General Robert E. Lee's command and the Army of the Potomac under General George McClellan's command would clash on September 17th of 1862. After nearly 12 hours of fighting, this battlefield would experience 23,000 American casualties. And after the fighting is over, President Abraham Lincoln would push forward the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation. Hello everyone, my name is Mark Cheney. I'm a park ranger here at Antietam National Battlefield. Today I'm here to talk to you about a very important tool, communication, and the role that it played here on Antietam. During the Battle of Antietam, a new branch of the Army will utilize the Signal Corps, and the Signal Corps' job is to send coded messages across wide spans of the battlefield without fear or threat of a messenger or a wire being cut or taken out. The Signal Corps would utilize these large white flags with a red square in the middle of them, and these met flags were designed as such because they were easy to see. On these fields of green and brown, a white flag with a red square would be easily seen a couple miles away so long as your vision wasn't obscured. And by waving this flag left and right, you could actually send letters of the alphabet. And those coded messages can then be translated to orders, sentences, commands that can then be relayed to troops, commanding officers, or even other generals. The head of the Signal Corps was Major Albert Meyer, and he was tasked with developing this system back in the 1850s. Him and his assistant, Porter Alexander, from the state of Georgia, would actually hone and develop this system all the way up until the 1860s. But when the Civil War began in 1861, Porter Alexander would take this system with him when he joined the Confederate States of America. Well, now both the Confederate States of America and the United States of America have this new form of communication, and it would do no good if both sides could translate these coded messages once a battle would begin. Therefore, a cipher, a coded message, would have to be developed. These cipher disks are actually a way for both sides to send coded messages without fear or risk of the other side translating the code. Today we're going to be looking at some simplified versions of messages that were actually sent here at the Battle of Antietam. These messages were important for a number of reasons because they would relay different orders, commands, or just simple communication that was important to have between soldiers. In order to send a coded message using the Signal Corps flags, the very first thing you have to do is get the other signal station's attention. These stations might be a mile, two miles away, so you run the risk of them not watching you. Luckily, you have this giant tool, this massive flag that you can wave back and forth just like this to get their attention. Once you've sent your messages by waving your flag left and right, the next thing you would have to do to let them know that the message is over is dip your flag three times just like this. When you're sending a message, you always want to send the message from your perspective. So if you're translating a message, you always have to keep that in mind. This looks like a left, but it's actually the sender's right. This looks like a right, but it's actually the sender's left. Okay, let's see if you can follow along. Can you decode this message? The very first message is just a simple right. And that translates, according to our cipher disk, to what are you doing? Now that might be a very simple message someone might relay to a regiment or a corps just to ensure that they are doing what the Major General has asked them to do or that they're taking actions that are appropriate to the Major General's plan. The next message is left, right, left, which translates to what can you see? That message is important because what it does is it allows us to realize what the other side of our army might be dealing with. This message is right, right, left, which translates to reinforcements are badly wanted, our troops are giving way. This is a very urgent message that might be sent to your major general or a corps commander because your regiment or your company might be dealing with some heavy fire from the enemy. This message is left, left, which translates to the enemy is falling back, too smoky to see much. Again, communication is key, so you need to know when your enemy is falling back so you might be able to take advantage and push the incentive for your men to rally and charge forward.
This message is right, left, right, which translates to, I have just sent an important message by telegram, signal to me on the receipt of it. The Signal Corps was a good middleman for us to send messages back to larger towns like Frederick that might have a telegraph station. This is how the Army communicates with President Lincoln. You did a great job translating those messages, but the use of flags did not actually stop here at the Civil War. Flags are still used today by lifeguards and even the Navy. While the communication system used in the Civil War had one flag to spell out the entire alphabet, early naval aviation semaphore used a flag in each hand. The signal person used arm placement and movement to signal different letters or numbers. That's not the only way naval aviators used flags for communication. The International Code of Signals could be transmitted using a variety of simple tools, like these colored flags. These are also known as signal flags. With signal flags, the Navy needed more flags than they did with semaphore to signal the entire alphabet and ten numeral digits. Signal flags are also an international language, so countries can use the system to communicate with each other even if they do not speak the same language. Each flag also has its own meaning, so ship can quickly express itself when needed. Signal flags have largely been replaced by more advanced systems, but aviation still uses many hand signals to communicate. Whether it's catapulting a plane from an aircraft carrier or helping a pilot taxi up to a ramp, visual communication is critical for the safety of aviation. How would you communicate on a battlefield before phones or radios? Let us know down in the comments section. And if you like this video, be sure to follow STEM in 30 on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to the National Air and Space Museum's YouTube channel.